Hey guys, uh, over the past few days I've been trying to figure out whether it's going to release all of season one, like it says right here, all at once, or if it's going to be episodic, kind of on a weekly basis. Um, if anyone knows for sure, let me know down in the comments below. But while I was looking, I came across this, which is just kind of information given to kind of I guess give you a head start on the series and I figured that would be the least spoiler way to kind of get as much information on this world as possible um because I am just a glutton for lore and just I, I want to dive into this so bad but don't want to spoil myself uh for the tv series with the books or anything along that line so this seemed like the most safe way or the safest way to learn a little bit and kind of get a jump start um so we'll watch moraine's quest Okay. The dark one was crushed by the last dragon at the cost of all of them. Oh. Okay. The last dragon was reborn. We don't know where or to whom. What I do know is that my mission is to find him. But we're running out of time. The dark one is waiting. His was that? Oh, dude, that is sick. And the whole world will turn to darkness. Okay, some scenes. Stand against. The dragon has been born again. Who is the dragon reborn? All right. That was weird. <laughs> Not the trailer, how I, I didn't expect the ending there. Um, but where'd that guy go? This guy. This guy's pretty sick. That mouth is insane. Um, I saw We saw a lot of him in the last trailer, I think. Um, but we've got the other one, which was the official teaser trailer. Both of these came out like a while ago and I just completely missed them. <laughs> so, okay. We're just... Oh, that was crazy. That was really good, like, scene set up on that one. Hmm. No matter what happens. Oh, that is a cool looking blade. Hold on, I want to look at that. Go back. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. It looks like it's got a hole in the middle. Okay. You don't get to see much of that. No matter what happens. A hole or maybe it was a a gleam of a jewel in there. So, okay, so that guy, I guess, would be the dark one. Trent. 
Trollocs, I believe is what those were called. I'm learning. And was that some kind of like crazy psychic attack? Uh, or magic? Oh no, I'm... Oh, okay, so that was a mixture of her magic and him fighting earlier, okay. I was about to say, I thought only women in this universe could use, like, magic attacks and stuff like that. But okay. So we have a quote from Moraine, it looks like. They're here for the same reason as I am. For you. The Dark One is waking. His whispers are already in the backs of our minds. But there will be one who can stand against him. The dragon has been born again. And it's one of you. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. So we have Moraine has come to the two rivers in search of the one who will save or destroy the world. A mysterious and powerful as Aesodai. Uh, capable of channeling the one power. Her arrival brings with it concern and it and threats of chaos. Oh, just threat, whatever. She claims to seek the prophesized dragon reborn, but for what purpose? A Sedai may never speak that which is not true, but the truth one tells is not always the truth you may think okay we have uh, Eglin kind of wish that we had like little pronunciation deals I mean I'll find out eventually when the show starts but uh, let's see it's the innkeeper's daughter I'm sure we'll meet the innkeeper. Uh, wise beyond her years, she is determined, steadfast, and driven by logic. She's promised to marry Rand, which might be one of these other guys. Um, but others see her potential. The town, wisdom... Ah, okay. The town, wisdom, wishes to train her and the arrival of a Sedai who wants to take her from two rivers further complicates her once simple life. Hmm. She's quickly realizing she could be more than anyone ever imagined. Ah, so she probably has magical abilities. Few things are more important to Rand. So this is, Ra oh, the redhead guy. Okay, okay. So this is Rand. The guy that she's supposed to marry. Cool. A few things are more important to Rand than his family and friends. He is impossibly stubborn. So, yeah. Impulsively driven by his love and compassion for others, especially Eglin. Or Edwin. Ed, Ed, mm. When Moraine arrives in two rivers, he pays little mind. Perhaps there is power within him or one of his friends, but his only concern is protecting those he loves at any cost. And he will have to do that sooner than later. All right. We've got Matt. Looks like a roguish type. So we've basically got the, uh, the hunter, the roguish type, Looks like he might be our bar our barbarian. Oh, this is this is great. Okay, so this is. I really like the the kind of archetypes that they they have set up for each of these. I'm not sure if that's how it was set up in the books, but at, just from kind of their looks, you can kind of get an idea of each person's archetype. Uh, if you were to think of it in like D and D terms or just basic fantasy terms, um, Matt is always ready with a smart remark, smart remark, and loves to make 
people laugh. And yet his mischievous smile and witty retorts simply retract from the question constantly burdening him. Is he a good person? Or how would he know? His parents were far from role models, yet he fears himself fated to follow their path. But perhaps, if that Aesidai is to be trusted, his future may have other things in store. Neat. And we got Perrin. Don't let his... Don't, blah, 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 blah. don't let the Fasidi... God. I am just unable to talk. Don't let the physique from long days working a forge fool you. Perrin is a gentle giant. To those closest to him, he's a man of strength and stability whose approaches every oh, who approaches every decision with thoughtful consideration. Despite his kind and gentle nature, his physical strength cannot be denied. Is this a reflection of some deeper power? Perrin fears that one way or the other Circumstances may reveal the answer. All right. Oh, man. Nenev? Nenev is fierce and assertive, commanding respect as the youngest wisdom of oh, the two rivers has ever seen. She's brash and un unpredictable, but her compulsion to heal is what truly drives her. Awesome. She may slight she may be slightly older than the other four from two rivers, but her innate abilities are not to be discounted. Nenev despise, despises the Aesidai, yet Moraine senses a power within her. One she simply cannot ignore. And this guy, Lan. Lan? <clears throat> One of them. Lan is Moraine's warder, a warrior bonded to an Aes Sedai. Ah, that's why they, they fought so well. Okay. A uh, warrior bonded to Aes Sedai through the one power. That's cool. Equal parts bodyguard, confidant, and ally. He and Moraine share an unbreakable bond driven by duty and honor. His stoic exterior reflects the unwavering wolf loyalty that supersedes his own desires he would give his life for moraine and will do what is necessary to find the dragon reborn whatever moraine's plans may be okay so that's a little information on a few of the characters or at least the main characters which is cool okay so So there's two rivers. Nestled between these rivers lies the home of five young women and men destined to shape the world. So Gildan. Gildan is a relatively small kingdom at the foothills of the Mountain of Mist. War has broken out there. That's good to know. <laughs> it's just pretty blatant. No information on the war, I guess. Shadar Logoth. Once the richest and most powerful city in the world, these ruins are now haunted by a shapeless evil. Okay. Breen's Spring. Is cobbled together at the edge of a quarry. The people here are... As hard as the stones they mine. Okay. Neat. <laughs> Tarvalon. It's the seat of power for Aes Sedai. Okay, so that's where she came from. And so perhaps the most influential city in the world. Neat. Ah. I need to go down. There we go. And the Kingdom of Tyr. This coastal kingdom is home to a formidable fortress known as the Stone of Tyr. It has never fallen. Okay. 
Cool. So a little bit of information on the world and probably some locations they'll visit in the show. All right. Sounds good. So we have another quote here. You've lived too long in these mountains, pretending what happens in the rest of the world won't, can't affect you. Cool. The third age, the wheel of time turns, and the age comes and pass. Leaving memories that become legend, there are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the wheel of time, but there is a beginning. Discover the beginning of the legend of, with the interactive timeline. Okay. Will it work? Yeah, you can see it. All right, so we've got the breaking of the world. The dragon lose, lose Theron, okay, and a group of male Aes Sedai attempted to cage the Dark One forever. When they failed, the Dark One tainted the One Power, ooh, driving all male Aes Sedai mad. Oh, uh, okay. In their madness, they broke the world. Mountains fell, lands were reformed, civilizations collapsed. And the towering dragon mountain, or dragon mount, was formed. This was the end of the age of legends. The pattern demands a champion. A child was born, believed to be... Loose there and spun back into the world to once again challenge the Dark One. This person has been referred to in prophecy as the Dragon Reborn. Okay. They are fated to have great power, and it is said that they will either save the world or destroy it. Okay, that's, yeah. I got that part. But that That's cool. So he's this uh, dragon person I'm not sure if he's like actually depicted as a dragon or hold on it does say the dragon okay cool so and that's how and he's reborn into a male's body so then we have 979 NE. That was. Ah, uh, so it counts down from a thousand, I guess. So, 979 NE, Moraine's Quest. The Aes Sedai Moraine began her search for the next dragon. An individual born on a foretold date, said to be the chosen one who's able to touch the source of the one power. Uh, what's the one source? Interesting. I didn't know that there was like a specific source of it. Hmm. Powerful enough to save the world from the dark one or destroy it once again. Okay, so that's how the the fact that they were born on a foretold date, that's how she was she's able to like gather these specific people. Okay. That makes sense now. And on the two rivers nine ninety eight. Moraine sir oh, so she has been searching for a few years. A year? 79, oh wow, she has been searching for a little while. Did it go back? Oh. Okay. I need to figure out like how the, the time works <laughs> in this. 
but I'll learn. I promise. Moraine's search for the dragon reborn led her to the quaint region of two rivers, where she had heard rumors of four, four, four young people who potentially matched the prophecy of the dragon reborn. All right. Looks like that's all of the information that they gave out. Again, still trying to figure out if it's going to come out as the full season or if we're going to get like episodes a week. Um, either way, I would probably expect maybe one or two episodes a week just to really kind of be able to break it down, uh, watch it a, a couple times and be able to, to really understand what's going on. So be tuned on... November 20th. So everybody have a great day and bye.